Okay, let's pray. Father, we give you thanks for your wonderful mercy, your love and your grace, your faithfulness towards us. Lord, I pray that tonight we would enter into study with you and your Holy Spirit. Lord, that you might teach us to walk in your ways and that you might be glorified in us. Lord, teach us, we pray in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Amen. Okay, now, what we how did anybody got any comments about what they looked at during the week? From last week's stuff? I, I do, I do. Go, Pauline. Get me readers on so I can see. Go for it, my darling. Well, I just had some thought that um, we have to be diligent. We have to be prepared. We have to be ready at all times. And the scripture that came to my mind is in Timothy 4 2, which says, instant in season and out, which means we have got to be. You know, ready for any opportunity that comes along. We can't afford to be, you know, dilly dallying and say, "Oh, well, what, what do I do here?" and and bail out because you don't know what you're doing. You need to be ready at all times. And the other thought that the other scripture that came to mind really isn't relevant, but it is. It's it's more you know, the, the 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 story about the virgin and the oil in their lamps, yeah. which is the waiting for the return of Jesus, but we've got to have our oil ready in in our lamp. We've got to have yes, we've got to be filled with the Spirit and at all times, and uh, rely on God in all things. And and the other scripture that came to mind was the one that we read in the first the first week um, lesson was the one in Esther. We are born to such a time as this. Yeah. yeah. Both, all of those scriptures are really very relevant, and Esther and it's time. Sorry, Esther was was born for such a time to save her people, hmm. and so we are to save our people, yeah. whether whatever people out there, God's people, yeah, that God's calling, and so we've got to be ready on the ball. Yeah. Sure. I think those scriptures are all relevant. One of the things that Pauline put a slant on, particularly about the, the one about the virgins, is that we should have our oil always in us because we don't know when the husband is going to call on us to function in, as his body. So we need to make sure, and this is part of the whole growing process, we need to make sure that we're really topped up with the Holy Spirit all the time, focused on what the Holy Spirit is doing in our lives. Not just a case of, oh, this is an end times tale. It ha does have an end times uh, uh, connotation, but we need to be that way all the time and being available to Christ in every way as he leads us. And that was really important. I thought that was great, a great slant that she put on it. Yeah. Um, it's so, so very true. Okay, anything else anybody had any idea on? Um, I suppose I think God challenged me a little bit with some of the responses. I haven't got them written out here, but some of the just, yes, I'll just get up and do it yes. type responses. And I felt a little bit challenged, you know, do I always just go, Yes, or do sometimes I go, oh, yeah. it was really interesting. It was today, it was one of those situations with a friend of mine that I caught up with, um, a sort of secular friend of mine. And there was the opportunity to actually have dinner with him, uh, which I've been trying for many years to actually do that. And for one, one reason or another, it's never worked out. But today, the opportunity was there, and I just went, Okay, let's see how this goes. And actually got to minister to him. Good. Which was something that I didn't think was possible with this particular person. Um, yeah. So I think it's definitely something that I personally need to work on just uh, okay, yes, and go. Yes. Um, so. That fits in really with, with the whole oil thing. Yeah. 
and being topped up and ready in season, out of season, which was the first scripture, that you're not expecting it. It's virtually out of season as far as you're concerned. But the door opens mm. and God makes the season because it's God that creates these encounters mm. and we're called to do those sort of things. And we've got to be ready for it. And we don't know when it's going to come. Sharon's got a hand up. <laughs> Hi, Sharon. <laughs> Hi. Um, I have experiences. I've got two neighbours here and one of them used to, used to, I don't know, I don't think she's born again. I think she was just um, was believing in God. So much trauma has happened in her life. She's told me quite blankly that she said, I, I've lost my faith. And she doesn't want to hear anything about the Lord, but um, that's one instance, right? Now I've got a neighbour across the road who has had, uh, she, uh, well, she, she doesn't believe at all. And um, she's had previous experience with Christian, uh, a particular Christian tradesman came in trying to sell her something, but most of the time he was trying to sell, sell uh, her the gospel. And she just didn't want to hear it. And of course, I, I, uh, she's just had an operation on her shoulder. I take her walking every day. So I know that the Lord has got me in place here with these two neighbours just to be doing Jesus' work uh, and helping and showing them love, that not to talk about scriptures because it won't work, that I can just show, they know I'm Christian, hold on, uh, but I, that's how I can just be faithful and, and good and, and loving and kind to them and offer my services in whatever way I can mm. and show them Jesus in that way. Good. That's great. Mm. Yeah, because sometimes scripture, people don't want to hear it. Um, they're just, they've had such a traumatic time. They don't want anything to do with it. Yes. Um, if you can just show them the love of God, yes. just through being kind or a kind word or yes. spending time with people, whatever it is, yes. that's what they're after. That's what they're hungry for. They want to see what the light. The light that, that's within us, you know, um, to share. That's what people want. They don't want to. They don't want to be preached to. They mm. they were preached to, you know. They don't want to have their you know people waving their fingers. You know. Mm. I think actions speak uh, louder than words. That's I'm right. Yeah. yeah. That's right. Agree. Yeah, we've mm. got to demonstrate our love to mm. people. We've got to yeah. be there to help them when when they need it, or offer yeah. to help them. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah, and when the time is right, then they'll listen to the scripture. That's yeah. right. Yeah, mm. they'll turn back yeah. to it. Yeah, sure. I had a neighbour down the road. I used to, you know, tell her something about the Lord, and she said, "Oh, you and your jolly religion." She said, but she laughed. But she kept coming for more. Than that. That's right. That's right. <laughs> but then they moved away, and so yeah. But you just plant little seeds every now and again. You do. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what it's all about. Did anybody fill out their three insights? Uh, yeah, insights. Yeah. Want to share? Oh, I didn't do that. No. no, no. I have. Go, Sharon. Okay, yeah. Sharon. There you go. <clears throat> okay. Do you want me to read just one of them, or or all of them, or what? What do you want me to do? Um, just just read, read the first. Read read the one that you felt was the strongest. Some most 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 affected you. Okay, well, um, it sort of just carries on, doesn't it? But anyway, I'll start with the beginning. Training begins in the local church, and it's essential, like the tree planted, as it says in um, Psalms one one to four, and to draw strength and nourishment and bear fruit to supply for others and be committed as God's vehicle for fulfilling biblical vision. Training. Mm -hmm. Or, uh, training also begins um, with a disciple's attitude and overcoming personal problems. Good stuff. So that's the first bit. Do you want me to keep going? Or? Yeah, go on. The second one was it is necessary to be proven in the local church by ways of credibility, good reputation and approval, and approved, sorry, um, and let our fruits be tested. Good. And then have a submissive spirit to be obedient to the word of God when he directs you and 
then I just say, oh, oh no, that goes on to the next bit. What I need to work on this week, I'm not telling you. <laughs> em, what did you have down? Um, I really enjoyed the Hebrew definition of heart, which was the whole inner life of a man, so mind, will, and emotions. Um, I really enjoyed the perspective of the um, Mark 7, 14 to 23 scripture about it's not what goes into your body that defiles you, it's um, what comes from your heart, so that whole heart attitude um, and heart condition. Um, and then obviously understanding our priorities with God as number one, following on from all of the um, excuses and things like that, the yes. unacceptable and then acceptable response to yeah. God's call. It's very challenging, isn't it, when you really start to look at that and have a look at your heart and you, you're confronted with what your heart could possibly be like. And it's, it's up to us as individuals to say, to be honest with ourselves and say, oh, I think I need to do some work there. Mm. Yeah. Anybody else got something I'd like to share? Um, actually, I had a bit of a chat to Matthew about this earlier. Yeah. Um, I, again, was thinking about um, David being after God's own heart. Yes. And what does that mean? What is God's heart? Um, and at a real, like, macro level, I thought it was real heart of sacrifice. Yes. And just and you know leaving the ninety nine sheep to chase after the one, and yeah, my sort of question was, you know, am I after God's own heart, like David? Oh. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> well, that was the other thing. You know, David wasn't perfect. David made mistakes, yeah. but David was still. I said, don't murder anyone. <laughs> <laughs> but that wasn't part of God's heart. Yeah. You know, I think in amongst what you've been saying and what the, that actually um, does have a, um, a, a, a different type of slant is David's heart was towards God. Mm. He wanted God, come what may, and he put all his trust in God, but he still had that, had that battle of the flesh within him mm. that we all face. You know, that, that's constant. We all face that in our, in our life. And sometimes, well, a couple of times he mucked up big time and more than once or twice or three or four times. But the fact was he always repented when it was when it was exposed or something like that. He just oh, mucked up big time. So but his heart was always toward God. He never left that. And that's what God. I mean, God knows us more than we can possibly know ourselves. So it's 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 knowing God knows that we what are we going to do when we're in that crisis situation? Are we prepared to really turn to God and oh Lord, I'm sorry, I've mucked up again. I repent, and that's all He asks. Um, and then He's we you know we're right before His throne again, and the blood of Jesus has really washed that sin away when Jesus was on the cross so we are clean anyway isn't that exciting mm -hmm. I find that so exciting that that's all he asks us to do recognize it and keep walking and keep growing in there and this is the whole process of discipleship is coming to that term coming to terms with the fact that we are right before God and we have a calling on our lives as individuals to do whatever he calls us to do as individuals and how we fit into the corporate body of Christ okay there you go. anybody else Anything else you'd like to say? <laughs> <laughs> Julia busting. Uh, you looked at me three times now, so <laughs> looked at me several times. Didn't matter. Um, so um, this week, somebody had said to me about um, our emotions and sort of your mind, will, and uh, your emotions, and um, it's about the renewing of our minds because our emotions we're so full of them. The, these emotions that we seem to follow them too much and we have to keep renewing our mind to stop following our emotions going back to our faith um and and have the will to to know the difference mm -hmm. and or the wisdom 
um, and to go constantly go back to renew our minds. Um, and, and our society is full of anxiety and depression and the list goes on, right? A thousand of them. Um, and I thought that was a real battle because David battled with his emotions, you know. Um, he, he would be calling out to God all the time and um, he, he would have to renew his mind again and go, no, I'm trusting God. I'll, I guess I've stuffed up, but, you know. Um, and, yeah, I thought that was an interesting topic that came about when when M mentioned the mind, will, and emotions. That's what reminded me earlier. I thought, oh, that's yeah, hmm. it's interesting what comes up. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do you think God's emotional? He has emotions. He has anger, and he has love, and he he doesn't need faith. <laughs> yes, <laughs> he's wise. Yes. Um, yeah, I'm sure he's got a moment. He loves. He's sad. He's Are we created in the image of God? Yes, of course. That's where our emotions come from. They are they are from God. God has made us like he is. And he loves passionately. And he all those all all of those sort of things are things that we've got to take on board. So, oh Lord, I'm just like you when I have these emotions. And he, so he, he, he will always understand where we're at, what we're going through, how we respond. Scriptures tell us that he has, he's full of joy sometimes, and he gets angry sometimes, and very, very angry sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> but he's working on us all the time, and he's so we we have those things, those wonderful emotions of God. Mm. Anywhere else? Anybody else want to say? Um, in regards to describe one thing that God spoke to you from this lesson, it kind of follows on exactly what you were sort of saying. Um, I, on my lunch break every day, I like write my prayers because that way I can't get distracted. Um, and God kind of leads me in that space. And um, it was during this week before I'd actually done this sort of worksheet that um, I, he was kind of showing me and we were reflecting um, how far I've come in the last 12 months in regards to um, what I suppose you would call the heart condition. So like the yeah. mind, will and emotions. Um, and yeah, that kind of 360, it was really cool to sort of reflect and recognize how situations now, it, I was sort of writing about how it's not even like I want to react or would react like the old version of me. It's actually that complete renewing which is really cool. Great, great. Something you just said very at the start of your thing there, it's not a throwaway line. And, I, you know, it's something that you, we can we can pick up. You were writing out your prayers because that that actually, I find that sometimes I do that. You know, when I'm praying or I, I'm, I, I really want to be particular about what I'm praying, I'll write it out as I'm doing it. And so it, that's it's really... Um, I can remember when I was studying for different things, I'd write out, particularly if it was a questionnaire type study, I'd write things out, I'd type them out, and I'd type the whole thing out, and and because you learn it that way. But when you're actually coming before God and you're thinking, you can be so quick and so flippant with your prayer. And not only that, you get into the stage, you know, Pauline and I pray together every morning, and, and I found that... I, that I was saying exactly the same thing repetitiously over and over again. So I thought, God, you know I'm praying, but are you getting sick of hearing this like this? And I just felt him say, just put a little bit more thought into it. <laughs> I don't know whether that was me or that was God, but I just felt, you know, I really need to be a little bit more um genuine i guess instead of because you can i found myself rattling something off and i wasn't even thinking about it and that's that's good in so it's something that we need to we need to think about things like that and slow yourself down this is part of the you know um looking at your heart and saying look i'm not doing this right and whatever the case may be so uh, yeah this is a this is a step a very forward step in the very early part of growth 
Tonight, we're going to look at session three, the local church proving and preparation. Now, this is going to be a little bit confronting and you'll have a lot of questions and we, you'll have a lot of questions uh, of me next week because I'm going to give you a couple of scriptures to go through and read through and think about in your uh, during the week. And I really want you to spend time thinking about it and be honest with your thoughts and say, this doesn't seem to be right. Doesn't sound right to me. Uh, I need to, um, uh, what, you know, it, it just, what do you mean, Lord? And um, if you can get an answer, great. I want you to share it. If not, we'll talk about it next week. Okay. Let's have a look at this. We see here in, in section one, the preparation in context. We see here the Lystra Derby Church is where Paul is starting to grow up himself. And he's starting to experience some incredible things, but he's in the growing process of discipleship himself. And if you, as you read through um, Acts 14 to 16, particularly in 15, you start to see, hey, Paul is, is really struggling with his understanding and he's growing and he had to go and spend years with the disciples. This is the great apostle Paul, but he had to be taught. He had to learn. He had to be discipled. So the, what the passage of scripture I'm going to, one of the passages of scripture I'm going to ask you to look at is chapter 15 of Acts. Yeah, or later. No, later. We'll look at 14 and 16 tonight. Um, it says here, um, as you can see on, on the diagram, the invitation and response, we've done that, we've done those two, and at the other end is the choosing, the equipping. There's six years of, of training that's going on in the lives of these people that we're talking about. Six years. It's not, uh, now I know, I, I've seen people in these last days, I've seen people really develop very, very quickly because it's a necessity. It doesn't mean to say everybody has to do the six years, but you do have to new, do training and you do have to do discipleship and thinking about why am I, why have I been called? You see, it's so easy, particularly, don't get me wrong when I say this, I love the Pentecostal movement. I love the Pentecostal expression of praise and worship and all that sort of thing. But that can become the whole thing. Mm. That is a sideline. That's just our time before God, our relationship with God, loving him. But for to what end? What's my, why do I, why do I, what do I get out of this? What does God want to give me in the midst of this? You see, he loves our worship, but he also wants to use us. Now, I, um, if, he, if he can't use us, he'll go somewhere else. He has a purpose for his church. And it's in that purpose of us getting close to him. The whole thing about praise and worship is a vehicle to get us into a feeling and a true emotion of relationship with God. Don't let it be a deceit. Don't let it be froth and bubble. Don't, and make sure it's genuine. I tried this many years ago when I was leading worship in a big church. I picked some lousy choruses to see how many people would worship to them. And they weren't. They just didn't want to worship because the music wasn't right. This wasn't right. That wasn't right. And it was actually, I was at Bible college, Haloxley's Bible co college at the time. And uh, I was talking to him and I said, this is a story. We need to, uh, people, I want to, I want to get to a, a stage where it doesn't matter what, you, what song I'm singing, I'm focusing on the words and I'm focusing on what I'm saying to God the worship I'm giving to him. They weren't bad for it. They were just simply simple, simple stuff. And most of, most of them were scripture. And if you've got a talent 
um, you can sometimes focus on that. God had to knock that out of me. He really had to knock that out of me. I've given you the talent for my purpose, Peter. So, you know, focus on Jesus. Focus on God. God is everything. Let him be the focus of everything you do. And this is the growing part of knowing how the relationship is going to develop within you. In one particular passage of scripture you'll be reading, um, he says that he's going to rebuild again the tabernacle of David that has been torn down and he'll rebuild it. You won't read that in. This is one I'm going to give you to read during, during the reading time, during the week. Now, that means in the tabernacle of David, worship was paramount. 24-7 worship was going on in the tabernacle of David. Singers and musicians were employed for that. They were just doing that all the time. And everybody that came into that tabernacle was in the presence of the Ark of the Covenant, in the presence of Jesus. And Jesus is our Ark. But the Ark of the Covenant represents Jesus to us. That's why it's not on earth today. It's been taken to heaven because Jesus is our ark. We don't need something else. And um, I think it's in Revelation eleven nineteen. It says God opened up um, his opened heaven and we saw the ark of his covenant in heaven. So it's that's exciting to me. We are called to have a direct relationship with God Almighty and to come into the Shekinah glory of his absolute surround. You know, I, I long to see that time when we just shine in the middle of the meeting, we start to glow with the Shekinah glory of God. Don't you want that? Mm. Why? Because it means God's really getting through to us. And the purpose we have is starting to be fulfilled. I want that more than anything. And if you believe it, you can get it. Don't doubt it. Take hold of it with both hands. I, don't, I want nothing less than this fullness. Can you imagine being like Jesus on the Mount Transfiguration? That's, that's for us, you know. Hallelujah. Very exciting. Okay. You know, I, I find that extraordinary. That's because I find when we sing scripture, it really takes the roof off. It does. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think that's really amazing. <laughs> You're right. Uh, I love I love singing scripture. There was a guy that was very big in the um, 70s, David. David. Ingalls. Ingl yeah, David Ingalls. And he, he wrote some, just, he just yes. put scripture to soul. Yes. And man, oh man, did That's he. Uh, and he, he wrote, a, wrote a song called Into the Chamber. Who's Brett? Danielle. Hey? Danielle. Brett Conobin. Brett's her dad. All right. <laughs> and um, he wrote this song called Into the Chamber. And he I, he was giving a testimony one night and he said he went in to, to record this in a studio that he paid for, but they, he couldn't get it until the middle of the night. And he went in to record this and do all this sort of stuff. And uh, anyhow, he could see the janitor that was cleaning up the, the studio on the other side of the screen. And there's tears pouring down this guy's face. And he came and he said, I don't know what you're talking about, but I want it. <laughs> And, you know, that was the, and he, he spoke about the truth of the promises of God in his songs. Now I'm not knocking today's um, songs. I love them. I love the, the, the beauty of, of what's being sung and the expression and all that sort of thing. But keep in mind, what we're doing is singing to Jesus. Nothing else, just singing to Jesus. Shut your eyes and just love it. And just feel it in your spirit. I don't know what to sound like. <laughs> My wife worships beautifully, but you don't want to hear it. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. 
<laughs> Can't get me to sing in your place when I come down then, otherwise you might have to shut the doors and throw me out. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's get to this before I get into trouble. <laughs> okay, we're going to be looking at Acts 14 and 16 today, um, but let's start in um, B, at the bottom of the page nine, training begins in the local church, Acts 16, 1. You can look at the Bible. You can have it, and I'll use the What are we reading? Acts 16, verse 1. No, we're going to be doing it. We're going to be doing Acts. Um, no, we're not going to be doing this during the week. Just... Go, go so next one now. During the week, we said earlier. Hmm. I wrote down. What you did I say? Read, you said read, read Acts 15. At yeah. Home. Acts 15. 15. Yeah. 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 And what are we reading now? 16. Acts 15. Oh, I thought we did it. 15. Okay. <laughs> okay. I've got it. Got it then? Got it. All right. Okay. okay. <laughs> Then he came to Derby, speaking of Paul and Lystra, and behold, a certain disciple was there named Timothy. And he's the, he's the reason why we're doing the study, this Tim guy. The son of a certain Jewish woman who believed, but his father was Greek. He was well known of by the brethren who were at Lystra and Iconium. Paul wanted to have him go on with him. And he took him and circumcised him because of the Jews who were in that region, for they all knew that his father was Greek. Now, that's a pretty savage thing to do. Particularly, he, he's a guy, he's a young man. It's going to be a painful experience, but why would Paul do such a thing? Yes. Paul is not a supporter of circumcision. Mm. Well, I don't know. I don't know what was going through his mind at the time. Okay. Was this so that he would, um, like, he'd be respected by the Jews? Like to please the other people that he was trying to. Sure. And it's that's it in a nutshell. Calls... And... Yeah. yeah. That's it in a nutshell. It really is. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Okay. Let's have a look at, and just to support that, have a look at uh, 1 Corinthians 9. Verse 19. For though I am free from all men, I have made myself a servant to all, that I might win the more. To the Jews I became as a Jew, that I might win Jews. So those who are under the law or under as under the law, that I might win those who are under the law. Mm -hmm. To those who are without law, as without law, not being without law towards God, but under law towards Christ, that I might win those who are without law. To the weak I became as weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all men, that I might be by all means save some. Now this I do for the gospel's sake, that I may be partaker of it with you. What barriers did he put on there? No barriers at all. I'm totally surrendered to serving people that Christ has called me to serve. And this is what he's teaching. This is a, this is a massive teaching exercise to Timothy. So important. Let's have a look at uh, 1 Corinthians 8 5. But even if there are so called gods, whether in heaven,
or on earth, as there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is one God, the Father of whom all things, and we for him and one Lord Jesus Christ, through whom all uh, sorry, through whom are all things and through whom we live. What have I done there? I'm sorry. Which scripture are you reading, Peter? 1 Corinthians 8, 5. That's a wrong scripture. I'm sorry. Is it Come on, any of these scriptures on the page. No, I'm writing it. These are ones I've written down. Oh. Leave it with me, I'll get back to it. I don't know why I've written that down. I've obviously put a wrong wrong reference there. I do apologize. I said, no, I'm sure it was my first I'll just try that. <laughs> Hi, Kate. Hi, Kate. Wait. She can't hear you. Can't you hear, Kate? She's <laughs> way better. I don't think she's hearing me. Yes, yeah, she is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, she's not hearing. Oh. Uh, I wonder why she's not hearing. She should rejoin. Well, that could be her problem. Is she, have you not muted her? Have you? She is muted. Maybe she needs earphones. Uh, uh, here, she just moved the chat in. The quick on the chat. Oh, that's annoying. It's a particular scripture I wanted to. Never mind. I'll I'll have I'll get that for you next week. Okay. Let's have a look, go across the page, like a tree, it says here on the top of page 10, like a tree planted, we need to understand that God is in the planting process of putting it down. This is a passage of scripture that I love and I challenge every one of you to get to know this off by heart. With in the next... I, have a I, recital. Sorry? Will we have a little recital? Well, you can have a recital. Oh, it's a beautiful sound. Yes. It is, and it's it's one of the it's one of the foundation um psalms. This one so important. Blessed is the man that looks not in the counsel of the ungodly. So, in the path of sin, the foundation, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. Now, this is so important. His delight is in the law of the Lord. Tonight. Our focus must be, when I say the law, what is the law? What does the law say to you? Hmm? It's the word of God. Sure. From the start to the finish, everything that's in that Bible is the law. A lot of people say, I'm not under law, I'm under grace. Well, you are under law. The, the word tells us we're under the, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. That's a law. We are no longer under the law of sin and death. If we break the law, the penalty is no longer death because Jesus has paid the price for that death. But whatever Jesus tells us to do, it's like in the Garden of Eden, there was no declaration of any particular law. But when God said, don't eat that fruit, if you do, you will die. We're still paying a penalty for that because the law said, don't eat it or you'll die. And he did. Well, she, both of them did. And in, in Romans 5, it tells us by the offence of one man, sin entered the world. And by the um, the obedience of another man christ jesus sin was atoned for so it's whatever god says is lord it's his direction to us 
And the scriptures tell us, and so often you hear me talk about it because I'm, I'm, I, I believe God has put it on my heart. For goodness sake, will you get people to understand the, real, the precious nature of this is that anything that I give direction to is for your own benefits. Why do I tell you to do something or not to do something? It's for your own benefit. And that's my, it reflects my state, says the Lord. Okay, any questions there? Are you still reading the psalm? Sorry? Are you still reading the psalm? We, we pretty much, actually, it only talks about down to the tree. Did I go down to the tree? Uh, he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he does shall prosper. Yes. <laughs> yes. Isn't that good? And then the seasons come and winter comes and the autumn comes and all the leaves fall off and go into hibernation for a bit. <laughs> Now we're hanging about. It says here, he shall be like a tree that brings forth fruit in a season, whose leaf also in shall its, not wither. In its season. Yes, but his but the leaf, the, the leaf shall not wither. Just changes colour. That's right. Up, doesn't wither. <laughs> there you go. Well, good. So God really is is there. He's our provider. He's a provider in every way, shape, manner, and form. And his expectation is that we trust him to the stage where there's nothing more, there's nothing but him. And that's a lot easier said than done. But I encourage you um, to really say, this is it. Jesus said, and I, I love this passage of scripture in um, Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28, come unto me all you that labour and heavy laden, and I'll give you, give you rest. Um, uh, it's as we come to, he wants us to do that. We are created to do that. At the Minister's Fraternal Luncheon today, we were talking about um, how people uh, in, the, in the, right throughout the culture, right throughout the world, are hungry for spiritual, actual spiritual experience. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, People have talked about Jesus but haven't been able to give anybody an example of the spiritual experience mm -hmm. because our depth has not been at that surrender where Christ could move through us in such a way where we could be so visible. But it's happening. It's happening in the lives of many Christians today because they're saying, I'm not satisfied with this. I want more from you, Jesus. I want more. I want more. And the whole surrender idea is becoming paramount in our lives. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. It says in A, planted roots go deep and are fixed into the planting soil, immovable, drawing strength and nourishment, and also bearing fruit to supply for others. Planted means speaks of commitment to the local church. Now, basically, this course gives us it challenges us to be part of the local church where you're planted. Not a place, not a situation where you church hopping and all that sort of thing, mm -hmm. but make where you are planted the place where you grow. If that place is a place that's giving good, sound nourishment, be prepared to cop it and move with it and grow with it. When you see the fertiliser of the word of God being preached, grow with it. And God, keep in mind, God has led most people, perhaps I would say, if they're listening to, if they've got any idea or hope of listening to God, he plants them where he wants them. I've noticed people come into our church and move away in a very short period of time. Why? Because God didn't call them there. They might have horses for courses. They might have a very different um, calling. They might have uh, uh, would not. That's not the calling for their life. 
but I, I'm finding that the people that are, that are sticking are growing. We're just hanging around like a bad smell. I noticed that. Yeah. Mm. Exercising on the floor too. <laughs> <laughs> don't know what we do without you. <laughs> okay, speaks of commitment to the local church as God's vehicle for fulfilling biblical vision, a commitment to spiritual authority and to the body of believers. Come with me to 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 5 to 8. I've certainly got this one right. Young Peter 2, verses 5 to, eight, 5 to 8. Okay, well, starting for coming to him as a living stone, rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God and precious. That's you. Sorry, did I read too quickly? No, that's not Jesus. That's Jesus. 1 Peter 2, verse 4. Yeah. You're a living stone, each one of you selected, and you are precious to God. You also, as living stones, are being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices, acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Therefore, it is also contained in the scripture, behold, I lay in Zion. Now, Zion, when you're reading the Old Testament and even in the New Testament, when you're talking about Zion, it's the church. It's God's chosen people, the church. Okay? And you'll find a lot in the Old Testament where God gives promises to Zion. And he's giving those promises. A lot of the people, a lot of people misunderstand the Abrahamic covenant is given to the church, not to the Jews. If they follow Christ, take down this passage of scripture, one Galatians, uh, sorry, Galatians 3:16. Fifteen or sixteen? Sixteen. 16. Galatians three sixteen. I just read it out to you, and this is this is a very important part of understanding God's purposes for us. Okay. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. and to seeds uh, sorry and his seeds sorry he does not say and to seeds as of many but as of one and to your seed who is Christ and this I say that the law which was 430 years later cannot annul the covenant that was confirmed before God in Christ that it should make the promise of no effect. You see, God made this that the only way, the promise of Abraham, the fulfillment of that promise, to, to be uh, the recipient of that promise, we must come to Christ, the Messiah. And that's what the Jews were looking for for centuries, looking for the Messiah. But they've missed him. They're still looking. They're still looking. They they refuse to accept Jesus the Messiah. So we and when you go through Romans, um, you find that that that's what it, it talks about a lot. So even today, they still no, don't. There's nothing to do. Yeah, there's I know. That's what I. Christ. Yeah, and they're beautiful. I've been to one of their sermons before, and it was just terrific. They can yeah. spend the whole sermon in the Old Testament and just like point to Jesus, sure. and it's wonderful to see. There's an old saying that that I learned in the early parts of my Christian life. The Old Testament is the New Testament concealed. The New Testament mm -hmm. is the Old Testament revealed. Yeah, yeah. And whatever 
the Old Testament is the shadow of things to come. Mm. And this is what this is the fulfillment of all the promises, the promises made to Israel and the Abrahamic covenant is for us today. Mm. We are really, Haloxley used to call us fulfilled Jews. So it's so important that we understand that it's, um, and we can't, um, Jesus has given us freedom. So we're not under the law of, of that bound that made the, put the, the Jews in under bondage. And we're free now. So we don't have to keep particular days. and that. But if somebody does that, um, we don't, we, it's just something that they do, they do it under God. And we'll talk about that a little bit later on the course. If they're doing something under God, let them go. If their heart is that they're doing it to God, let them go. If that's that's a right heart, because this is our heart. They're worshipping God. Yeah. You know, when I've, I've, I've seen a lot of people challenge people because of some silly doctrine that they might disagree with that's really not important, and they say they're not Christian. So crying out loud, they're, they're worshipping God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, and Christ died for them. Jesus is their Lord and Saviour. Okay, so they might have something wrong. But uh, let's just, the, the fact that they they receive Jesus as their, their Lord and Saviour, let's be loving and understanding and patient with each one of them. And because, you know, I, I, I look at the ways that I have changed over my Christian walk and my attitudes, and I think, oh, some of the terrible things I've done as far as judging other people yes. uh, i can remember oh, no i'm not going to go on. Yeah. Gonna, <laughs> better keep going with moving it. right along moving right along darling yes uh, uh my my wife is a lovely lady isn't she moving right along <laughs> one peter two five to eight we've read through that haven't we yes. okay training begins with a disciple's attitude and that, that passage of scripture that we read in 16.1, Acts 16.1, is so very important. Okay, you've got this guy who Paul says, I think I'll disciple you. Now, first of all, um, I'm going to, we're going to the Jews, so I need you to be circumcised. Why? My, we talked about the reason. But the attitude had to be right, didn't it? Will I submit? Will I surrender to this? Yeah. And you can read that 9, uh, nine 10 and verse 19 in your own time. And indeed, once again, training begins in overcoming personal problems. And the personal problem, this guy has got, he's got a father who's a, who's, um, a Greek, mother who's a Jew, and he's supposed to be circumcised, and it's been completely against all his, um, he, we don't know whether his um, father would have agreed to this, or whatever the case may be. That's a personal problem he has to get over. Are we prepared to say, I will do what God wants me to do? We need to be really discipled by Jesus. And a conviction will come into our heart. What's wrong with your father being a Greek? Sorry? <laughs> I found it's, you know, it's something bad. Greek. Oh, <laughs> early yeah. There's a um. Yeah, those Greeks, especially. Well, there's there's a very good. If you get hold of this book, it's by an author by the name of Leslie Newbigin. It, it's called Foolishness to the Greeks, and it's. Oh, yeah. It's an extremely good book, and it's it's one of the one one of the great classics of Christianity. Um, it talks about how 
the whole idea of somebody dying to save somebody is foolishness to a logical mind. And Greeks are renowned for their logical mind. And that's why it's so foolish to them that, that this guy should be hung on a cross and, and, and be dead. And um, so the, the foolishness was, you know, that's where the, the statement comes from. That's why Chris always says, oh, get, get, get the Greek out of it. <laughs> yes, yeah. get the Greek out of it. Yeah. It's also a cultural thing, you know, like where we're built in the pillars of Greece and Jerusalem. Like we have a very logical, rational mind that is just anathema to the Hebrew. Like the Hebrew, everything was on a plane, it was to the Greek, it's above and below. And like, it's a different way of viewing the world to the Hebrew. Mm -hmm. It's like it is interesting to put yourself back into that mindset, like see things as they do. Like heaven and earth like intersect to the Hebrew versus the Greek, and like heavens above, hell below. Like it's a separation of different spaces. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, they had they had so many of their their gods that they would just worship, and they didn't understand that um, the the Jewish God came down. For us, for all of us, yeah. You know, they had how many gods? Oh. Many, but they left space for God. Don't worry, that, that unknown God needed yeah. to fill the void of. Okay. Interesting. Excuse me. Yeah. Are you? Are they muted? Can they talk? Can they yeah. ask yes. questions? Yes. Yes. I think they've muted themselves. Yeah, yeah they did. They've yeah. muted themselves. Yep. Hi, Danielle. <laughs> Patty. <laughs> yep. They didn't know who Brett was earlier. Yeah, well, um, Brett's my dad. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everyone. Um, okay. I heard Jenny and Jake talking before, but the feedback wasn't very good. Can you? Repeat in a louder voice. Oh, was this was this talking about the Greeks? No. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Okay. There's a book written by a man by the name of Leslie Newbigin called Foolishness to the Greeks. And he, he focuses on on the uh, flesh, uh, the attitudes of the flesh where Greeks saw it was total foolishness for a man to hang himself on a cross um, to save other people. That, that, was, that was nonsensical to the Greeks. And we do need to, we need, and um, uh, Jake pointed out that um, Chris Millen often says, you need to get the Greek out of you and because you need to get the logic out of you. And this is so much a part of, getting the logic out of your brain and saying, you know, our, our God is a God of the impossible. And uh, it's it's so important that we understand that we're not dealing with something that's logical. We can't, you know, the, the word says God's ways are far beyond our understanding. And even God says, thank you. Um, 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 what was I saying? Oh, yeah. Um, um, so there's um, there's something that's in my life at the moment that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. And the person that's a part of it with me is just going, it's God, babe. It's God. We, we can't make sense of it. It's God. And he just happens to be a Christian for a lot longer. And he's like, stop fighting it and rejecting it because your logic says it can't happen. This yes. is God's doing and it will happen in his way, not yes. the way we want it to be. Right. And it's I'm really working through that process at the moment of trying to see that this thing is completely possible because it makes no sense. Like it's right. absolutely ludicrous. For this to actually be a thing yes but it is a thing because god's making it possible i can understand that kate look i think we've worked, we've got to come to terms with we, we don't un, we don't necessarily god doesn't call us to understand he calls us to trust 
Yes. And it's in the middle of really just think of the very the very basic things that we believe in, like the healing process, the laying on of hands and the impartation of healing through the laying on of hands. I mean, that is not a logical thing that does not happen through human logic. Mm -hmm. And and uh, so and but if you remember when that happened, there was the sorcerer in, in the book of Acts mm -hmm. that saw that happening through the hands of the disciples and he wanted to buy it he said you've got to show me what the trick is so the thing is this is something that we we've got to come to terms with that we're not asking god to be logical and really we, we're just simply saying i believe you lord i believe what you're doing i believe your promises and i'm going to move forward in that mm -hmm. so that's pretty exciting it's not what faith is all about yes. sure that is faith <laughs> now there's, there's I don't know very quickly just because you brought that up um, I, I just wanted to to teach you a principle on faith faith is believing in every way that God is and he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him Hebrews 11, Hebrews 11. now but in, in that's the foundation we believe with every part of our, our being but there's there's ways of of taking that on board for want of a better word mm. first we hear god speak god speaks and gives us a word speaks into our lives so we hear the voice of god the second principle is we believe it's god that's spoken we take that on board we believe it and the third one is we do something with it and if one of those elements is missing faith is gone mm. if god didn't speak now he can speak through his word he can speak into your heart and in your mind if he's speaking into your heart and your mind it'll never contradict any part of the word of god and this is one of the really important reasons why we need to know the Bible. We need to know the word. <laughs> Just lost your point, Al. <laughs> we really need to know the word. Now, in knowing the word, it is a security. Look, uh, people say, oh, you, you're, you're mad. You know, it's a book. No, it is. It, it, it's a, a book written by the author who is God. Yeah. And it's a book that brings us into a relationship with the author, how we come into that relationship and how he expects us to live. And if there, there is not one part of that book that if you do not be obedient to what it says, it won't, it will always pan out for you. Mm -hmm. But you, you need to do it in the agape love of Christ, which is also the Holy Spirit. Mm. If you haven't got the Holy Spirit, you have not got the agape love of God. I think that if you, if you don't do what he's asking you to do, he'll go and ask somebody else. That's right. And it's like, missed out. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's not FOMO, but sure. I've, I've missed out on doing something special. Yes. He wants me to do something. Yeah, yeah, that's it. I have a quick example of that just because it happened last week. Um, so obviously, I've been in the word more, and so I'm getting to know the Lord's voice much clearer. I was on site, we needed water. I went to use a tap, the guy I'm working with, like that tap has no water. I'm like, it's gonna have water. The Lord said it will work, and he said, You're dreaming. I walked over full of confidence because he, he told me, Go get water from that tap. Just before I went to him, like, I really do hope the water comes out. <laughs> came out in like a big rush. Like, apparently, it wasn't meant to have water, but it had water, and he was very shocked. And I said, What are you shocked about? The Lord said it would work, so it did. <laughs> what a powerful testimony! <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> so, and and if you if if you don't believe mm. it's from God, it's not going to work. Uh, no, darling, you can't do that. Mm. And if you if you uh, don't act 
on what he says. It's not going to work. Yeah. Why aren't you going home? Okay. So that, that you know, they're, they're things you need to keep in your mind about faith. Now, if if you if you you're struggling, I, I when I first realised that this was such a, a powerful truth, I found that I didn't have um, the faith to believe. When I say the faith, I wasn't sure I was hearing from God. So as a result of that. In fear, I didn't do what God said. Later on, I would find, ah, that was God talking to me and I missed out on the blessing. So as it, I learned that I need to step out and say, okay, Lord, I'm believing this is your word. It's your voice. It, it's in line with your word. I'm going to step out and say this is it and do it. And... Um, I'm finding that I, I think you probably heard me share this. I'll do it again. I, when I had the dry cleaning business about that woman that came into the shop with cancer, yeah. breast cancer, mm. you heard me sto heard that yeah. story? Yeah. I just added, I heard God say, pray for her and I'll heal her. And, you know, she. I, I just reached over and put, I, all I said was be healed in the name of Jesus. And she came back a week later and said, I don't know who you know up there, but I have got absolutely no trace of, of cancer anywhere in my breasts or in my body. And a couple of, or two, two years later, she came back with a daughter that had the same thing. God didn't say anything, nothing. She wasn't here. I prayed for her. And I, and hoping, in, in because... Um, hope is, is the definition of hope is a earnest expectation of good. I had that for her, but there was no real, I didn't really have a word. So each time I, I hear God saying something or asking me to do something, step out. Don't be afraid. Step out because that's when you start to hear the difference in the voices. Is that me? Is that a compassion? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and really, we, we are people who've got the compassion of God alive in our life. Mm. And we do have compassion for the lost because that's growing in us, because that's Christ in us. Christ died for the lost. So we have that compassion within us. And expectations of, you know, oh, I just want to see everybody healed. Mm. I really want to see... Um, John G. Lake Ministry and all that sort of stuff, really flashing all over, hospitals empty and all that sort of thing. I want to be used in that way. That's an expectation, but grow in it. Let God build you up and grow in it. But yet, in order to grow, you have to take that step. You with me? Amen. You have to take that step. Don't be afraid to take that step. Wherever you are. If you hear a voice, it might be the old lady in front of you that's in the, in the line in the, um, uh, at the supermarket and she's really struggling. You can see she's in real pain. And you feel, oh, Lord, was that you? Should I pray for her? I, I, you know, just take that, that moment. And I'm not, I don't, don't want to put you under pressure here or condemnation. Just wait for that to hear from God. And then perhaps go to that lady and say, could I pray for you? Just pray. It's happened on so many different occasions. People have been healed like that. Ada, can I ask a quick question? Yes. What if the person doesn't want you to pray for them? I say I'm no, conflicted by this. I'm really conflicted by that because if they don't want prayer, they don't want prayer. But What's I it? still feel bound to pray for that person because no. God's asked me to do it. No, well, if they don't want it, don't, don't, don't push it. Just pray in your mind. Just pray for them in your head in any way. Yep. And go, oh, okay, I'm terribly sorry to have disturbed you. And just pray for them anyway in your, in your head. Yeah, that was quite of my question. Do I still pray, but just in my head, knowing that, yeah. Um, just say thank you. 
uh, um, and say bless you. Um, but not everybody will will allow that to happen. Okay, let's get back to our our thing here. Number two, the necessity of being sorry. Anybody else got something? No. Okay. The necessity of being proven in the local church. Acts sixteen two says he was well spoken of by the brethren who at who were at Lystra and Iconium. So he was obviously a person who's been functioning in the church. He's growing. Now's the time for his discipleship. Now's the time to grow and say, okay, I, I, I really want to, I want to move on in God. I really need to know him more. And this is what's taken place. The Amplified Version says, Timothy had a good reputation among the brethren. He was a person of sound character, integrity, and that sort of thing. Look for this fruit. Don't be afraid to look for that sort of fruit in a person's life. And in the Phillips translation, Timothy was held in high regard by the brethren at Lystra, Lystra and Iconium. Basically, it was a good report. He had a good report about him. <clears throat> Sorry? To have credibility attested, proven, approved. <laughs> now I want you to read those scriptures in Acts over in your own in your own time. And we'll talk about those when when you come back. That Greek word Maturio, what's um the direct translation like what word is that describing? that that's in relation to um good report good report yeah yeah a uh, yep the page before to have credibility attested Number two, um, Acts, read those scriptures in your own time. Although we might have a look at one, Tim. No, read it in your own time. <laughs> okay, B, examine the fruit. The fruit. 1 Thessalonians 5.12. Let's have a look at that. Which one in Thessalonians is it again, Peter? Sorry? Uh, which verse and chapter in Thessalonians? Uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.12. 5, 12. Thank you very much. Okay. I haven't got notes, I'm sorry, because I had the wrong email uh, address. Right. And, um, yeah, sorry about that, Danielle. No Did you problem. hear that, Danielle? Yes. Okay. <laughs> She was writing it down. Yeah. Now, this is speaking about people who work among, among us in uh, that are our teachers and our, our uh, instructors in Christ. 512. And we urge you, brethren, to recognize those who labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you and to esteem them very highly in love. For their work's sake, but at peace among yourselves. Be at peace among yourselves. This is something that um, look to some of these people that um, I find that I've been blessed in pretty much all of my Christian walk to have very good um, mentors and people who would spend the time with me. And um, um, I believe that, you know, Kim's a, a good mentor for all of us. And I'm very open to to spend time with you at all, you know. Um, and I believe that over the, the many years that I've been sitting with men like Hal Oxley and Kevin Connor and um, Derek Prince, um, I, they've imparted a lot, of, a lot of wisdom into my life that I believe God wants me to share. And so I'm available for you 24-7, okay? 
I mean that 24 seven, you wake up in the middle of the night and say, oh, I can't get an answer. Don't ring me. <laughs> <laughs> I will. Yeah. Now I think it. you've got a couple of 10.30 PMs and 11 o'clock PM at, at one stage, Peter, but I think you know that they were, <laughs> they were emergencies that you helped me through, yeah. so I much appreciated it. I have had them. I, I can remember teaching this once before, and I said, any time of the morning, uh, two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> 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 won't you be won't you listen yeah, that's right yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. it's all good fun okay now i want you to have a look at psalm 26 2 there's a beautiful psalm there yeah, and it's you know it's something i think a, a prayer if we can all offer that up and this comes out of the integrity of your heart can i honestly say this before god and you've probably heard me say don't ask god to do something you don't really want him to do and that's dangerous <laughs> like a proud person saying humble me god humble me okay <laughs> He's certainly not. <laughs> Patience, Kate. Patience. <laughs> That's a hard one. <laughs> yeah. Examine me, O oh Lord, and prove me. Try my mind and my heart. That's powerful, isn't it? And really, I think, although I made a bit of a joke about that, if we know there's something in our lives that needs to change, be courageous enough to say, Lord, help me deal with this. Help me deal with this. And uh, he will. And he'll do it gently for a while. And <laughs> depend on our reaction and response. And when you see it not working and you say, oh, Lord, I don't seem to, this doesn't seem to be working. And just push it a little bit harder until it's very painful. <laughs> it's always he loves us so much and he's got so much patience with us. And, uh, you know, I love those scriptures that say he'll never leave me or forsake me. I'll always be with you. I will never leave you. I'll be with you till the end of the earth. And he who started a good work in me will continue it to the day of Jesus Christ. Trust in him in every way. Yeah. Isn't that important? I trust in him. Sometimes I, Lord, help me with this. And he's like, I will, but you need to work on that thing first. <laughs> that leads to help with this because yeah. that way. That's it. That's it. Okay. And that comes under examining the fruit. And uh, don't be afraid to examine the fruit. Look at the person. And uh, sometimes you might get a shock. And, but keep in mind, we all, we're all walking a walk. Yeah. And don't be too judgmental of other people. Just, but, but know, if you see something that's, that's bad there, just know it's there. And talk to the Lord about it and say, okay, where do I, what do I do with it? And uh, that brother or sister might need help. Be prepared to do that. Step up. And say, just be a friend. Um, and a lot of people won't ask for help until you get alongside them. Mm. Pride gets in the way too. Pride's big problem. And uh, our emotions too. <laughs> having a submissive spirit. Goodness, how often has God said that to our church? James 4 7 is a beautiful uh, promise. Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. The minute you, you know, there was a time 
when he was attacking me every hour, sometimes two or three times an hour. And as soon and you, I, I, I think I said it to you, Jake, and you've uh, you've mentioned it on one of Chris's thing about mentioning the name of Jesus, yeah. Jesus, Jesus. And as soon as you bring Jesus into it, ah, rats! <laughs> Gotta do that again. <laughs> I heard a song today, and it was like, um, it was like. God, the things I'm scared of are scared of you. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. That really is good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus, that true? Like, everybody went up against the demons and they're like, oh, no, it's you. Please leave me alone. Like, these <laughs> things have been tormenting people and now they are begging me. Yeah. <laughs> That's a very good point. I, I remember this uh, guy... I can't remember his name. He was an evangelist and, and uh, a powerful man. And he went to this city in America as the keynote speaker. And I booked him into this hotel, posh hotel. And um, anyhow, as soon as he entered the room, he knew it was a room where some not so very pleasant things had taken place. Mm -hmm. And uh, anyhow, he's, he's, and he, went to bed that night and the, the all these vile thoughts came into his mind and he said oh. so he got out of bed he locked all the doors all the windows were closed and put on worship mu music and got into spirit spiritual warfare <laughs> and he said they, they were really screaming let me out let because he he sealed the whole room with the power of God, and he was jamming the, the the whole the fullness of God into their head or whatever they've got. <laughs> I opened the doors, and he said there was like a a, a wind rushing out. And they were all gone. <laughs> so, so, and beautiful night's sleep then. <laughs> from then on, from that way. <laughs> wow, what a great way to go. <laughs> okay. Um, what else? Read those other scriptures in your own time. They're very good to read. Um, they're they're uh, very powerful as far as, as um, um, knowing, getting to know your authority and uh, also teaching you what God expects from us as submission. That passage of scripture that I so often refer to, I can't get away from it because God said it, has said it to me that and it's 12 1 uh romans 12 1 um that present your bodies a living sacrifice holy and acceptable under god which is your foundational act of worship you see on that presentation of you presenting your whole body your whole being your heart your mind your body to god as a living sacrifice saying everything in me is dead and given to you that is when God can use you. That's when God can actually function in your body and, and you are just totally sub subjected to him. You've got no pride. You've got no arrogance in your body. You've got nothing. And the minute you see it coming up, jump on it. I'm not going to put up with that. That's pride. That's anger. That's, and that's that comes out of pride or whatever the case may be. You know, the scriptures tell us in, in Peter, and it's um uh, it's quite um it's quite interesting that Peter said this because Peter was full of pride, <laughs> and he said uh, God gives um, resists the, the proud and gives grace to the humble, and that's you know if if you're a proud person, if pride is a problem in your life, you need to really fight it, get rid of it, and that's that's when. You, I, I, I would encourage you to say, Lord, help me not to be a proud person. Don't humble me. <laughs> <laughs> but if he needs to, okay, if you need to, go for it. <laughs> but if that's the way, because he knows best how, best what to do with you. I was, who was I sharing it with? Um, uh, Chris, Chris Miller. Um, 
Nothing can happen to you that doesn't go across God's desk first. Get hold of it. Get hold of it. And it's everything to do with you growing up. What we're talking about is growing up. Yeah. And be really being really okay. And uh, that's the end of here end of the lesson. Any questions? And I'll get that proper scripture for you. I wrote down how the book's going for them. How the books going? Are they on order? Or? Oh, yeah. yeah, they're on order. They just haven't turned up yet. And I, I, I keep looking at the front door. Yeah, right. yeah. Peter, I'm having a little bit of... I have to be careful. Um, I'm interceding for um, a person a lot lately. And it's gotten to the point where... I've literally felt this person's heartbreak. She is a Christian. She's a firm believer. She's been a Christian for a lot longer than I have. But she's not willing to see what needs to be changed. And the second I try and mention anything close to a vision or something that God's got me to pray about, my reaction has always been to tell her about it. But the problem with it is she's not ready to see it and she becomes defensive. But if I pray about it without talking to her, I feel like I'm doing the wrong thing by her. Okay. Look, um, Kate, the, the, the thing is you can't... Um, very often your prayer will lead that person into whatever you want, whatever God's putting on your heart for them. Um, they can't see that very often. It's like, um, um, you know, if you see somebody behaving in a certain way and they need prayer, they need to change their ways, um, it doesn't mean to say you've got to go and tell them they need to change their ways. Just pray for them. Say, Lord, I, I see something in, in a person's life. They're struggling with this. And I really, I really want to see them set free. And just let God open the door for you. But the minute you try and push that into push uh, into somebody's life in those areas, unless they're prepared to open the door, you're going to do more harm than good. Mm. Just keep praying. Just keep praying for them. And uh, be open to what God's leading you and what God's showing you. There's an old saying, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make a drink. That's right. Mm -hmm. yes. This one is. And if you're going to drink. Much this person. Sorry? Um, and I don't, I just, I don't, I don't understand how they're not getting it. Like my, I've been in a ball in the corner crying for this person because God's put them on my heart. Right. And well, I just, you crying. know, I'll sing a song for them rather than praying. So I have actual words because I don't know what else, don't know what else to pray for them. Yeah. I've prayed that God's will be done. I've prayed that they, you know, their heart become open. I've prayed that they hear the little whispers that God's, and I pray this every time. And it literally gets to the point where I'm in a corner, bawling my eyes out, and I've got no words left to pray. I've actually been praying for somebody very close to us for 16 years now, and uh, that hasn't changed. But I know God's got it in hand. Mm -hmm. Just patiently keep keep doing it. Patiently keep. Well, I, I could. I got to the church yesterday. We cranked it. I I cranked the music so loud because I had to scream. Like I walked around the house and just let everything out. I'm just like. Because I, I can't, hey. Do you believe God's hearing you? Yeah. So I'll, I'm lucky enough to have somebody alongside of me in that space, but I'm just so frustrated. And I'm like, I need to give it to God. And I just happen to give it to him by screaming my guts out and letting it out. And after a three-hour session at the church last night, I come back feeling refreshed and renewed this morning. I'm ready to fight for them again. 
but I had to go to the church and give it all to God and scream and pray and worship for three hours with somebody to be able to get back to the point that they're not upsetting my spirit anymore. Well, um, I'll spend some time with you later. Yeah, let's press, this is probably a bit more personal than to share. Okay. Anybody else got anything they'd like to share? Or it's really nice. Thank you. Is it really nice? Coconut ears. Yeah. What is? The coconut ears are nice. Oh, they, they are. Um, hey. <laughs> Sorry, we're talking about food now. Oh. Yeah. You have to mood yourselves. <laughs> we, have, we have pineapple as well. <laughs> Strawberries. It's great. just me talking about uh -huh. food when other people are on diets. Harsh, Jenny. Harsh. <laughs> we can eat fruit, Kate. Fruit, Kate. I mean, fruit. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I don't come to your house to have home group because then I'll <laughs> eat. <laughs> You'll notice I'm being good, Kate. I'm not eating anything. I'm just drinking water. He's very good, Peter, because it says that you shouldn't, on everything that I've read, it says that you shouldn't eat of a night time. It's the worst time to eat. Um, just, just not that that stops me. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it's because your body, because you go to bed and you're trying to wind down for sleep. Um. For people like Jenny that don't have weight problems to, to worry about, it's probably okay. <laughs> but I look at sugar and I put on 10 kilos. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Struggling with but I'll say good night, Max. Good night, Max. Good night, all. Oh, Helen. Good night, Helen. I'll turn the lights on. Night, Helen. Nice to see you. Thank you, Kate. All right, I think. Um, I've got to get Zach off to bed, so I'm going to head off to. Um, okay. Do you normally, is prayer as a group a thing with us when we, no? Yes, what? Prayer as a group a thing? We prayed at the start. I saw it before. Yeah. Uh, okay. Oh, what we'll do is um, we're going to have uh, we've we got one more one more meeting before we break for Christmas, and we'll have four more after Christmas. But we'll, before we do that, we'll we will have a uh, um, uh, a time of prayer before we break. So, uh, and any prayers that that anybody please if if um, if there are prayers that anybody wants to offer up at any time that want us to pray as a group, uh, please um, feel free to ask. And I can send that out, out through. And it, um, one, of the, one of the parts of discipleship is, and one of the major parts of discipleship is integrity. And if somebody asks you to pray, and this is a, a, a very... Um, in group that's that's pretty close. Um, we need to respect um, each other. The people need to to think they're safe, know that they're safe within our group. And um, so, anything you do ask for prayer for, I would like to to think uh, and believe that anybody could share anything they need prayer for, and we will stand with them. Because there's never, um... yeah. Um, can some... I? Just hang on, Kate. Am I able to share something hang very on. quickly? Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, go on. Me? Yes. So yes. you've had a fair bit to do with Benjamin, and I think Carissa, no, wasn't a part of it then. She was becoming a part of it. So um, just to share a little bit of ben, Ben's backstory, he's a very troubled young lad, and he's been in ICU many a times. He got involved in criminal activity for a bit, and those were them 11 o'clock phone calls that Peter got that had to had to deal with some pretty harsh situations. 
Uh, he's gotten better in self-harming, but he's actually um, started to really turn into drugs. Um, he is now 19. He's living in Melbourne. Um, he's made it very clear that he doesn't want to come to church or be a, a part of um, any Christian sort of activity. Um, he doesn't want to work at the moment. He sort of wants to sit at home and smoke bongs on the couch. And he's actually, okay. um, he actually tried ice a couple of months ago, which broke my heart. <laughs> um, thank God, literally, thank you, Jesus, that Ben had a terrible experience and ended up in hospital and he never wants to try that drug again. I'm just so appreciative of our God that that happened um because that's but if um people could pray in their in their time that ben just um really see what's out there and that the marijuana may stop the anxiety in the meantime but in the end it's creating the anxiety and it's creating the worst mental health and it's it's going to end up giving him schizophrenia. I gu I guarantee it. Um, if he keeps going down this path, he will end up like his mother and his father. It's in his genes on both sides. It needs to stop. Okay. Well, we can pray for Ben and um, make it, we, each one of us here, um, um, uh, we'll pray for, pray for him now, but also right throughout the week, Let's lift, it, lift Ben up in prayer. I know Ben very well, and Ben is a very troubled young, young fellow. Let's pray together. Father, we just lift Ben before you. Thank you. Lord, you know the cry of, of, of Kate's heart, uh, an aching cry that comes from an aching heart. Lord, I pray that uh, you'd move in Ben's life. Bring him to you. Father, I ask for his, his heart, his soul, his mind, his spirit, for the kingdom of God. I claim it, Lord, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I claim him for the kingdom of God. Lord, move in his life in a mighty way. Bring him to you. Thank you, Father. Right now, where he is, even right now, he would know a touch of your hand. In Jesus' wonderful name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Yeah. Pray for him right throughout the week, if you would. And all of all of those, all of you guys on, online. And uh, I just I guess a positive to note to that is I have no doubt that the fire and the passion in this child and what he has been through, he will end up in Christ one day and he will be. Um, God will use what he's been through. Like it's just me literally keeping my eyes on God because I, I, there's no way that this child can survive eating glass, um, you know, all the drugs, swallowing batteries, swallowing jewellery, swallowing, you know, everything he possibly could and, and the rest that I shouldn't probably mention and still be alive. His stomach is still completely healthy. Like, um, so I really praise Jesus for that. And I really thank, you know, you, Peter and Kim and everybody else that helped support him in that, them times that he was in the ICU because it's just an absolute miracle that he's still alive. Mm -hmm. um, so for him to be still alive, I know, I know God's got a plan for him. Um, but I, I very much appreciate all your prayers. Um, right, we'll I'm going to go get Zach into bed. It was nice to be a part of the nighttime conversation. Um, and next week is the last week? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's the last week before Christmas. Yeah. All right. Um, I'll see everyone Sunday week at church, I guess. Or, yeah. No, next Thursday. Okay. See you next Thursday. Okay. See you. Okay. Bye. Next Sunday is our last Sunday at church. Yeah. We're going to the party and then we're going on holidays. Oh.
Oh, very nice. So we're not going to be around. Two weeks holiday. Oh, it's good. We're going to be home. That's going to be the first holiday we're going to be home by the 28th. So you party like it's 1999 then, eh? I'm just, you know, you know, the best place to have a holiday. In your own home, in your own bed. It is. You know, we the last holiday we we went on, we came back totally exhausted. We did everything we we jammed everything we could into three weeks, four three weeks, a month. Weeks. Well, it was a four week holiday, but by the, after three weeks, we were just done. <laughs> I mean, we were done. We we we're in in London, and and we're in in my son's flat, saying, "I don't want to go anywhere." <laughs> we walked everywhere. Well, that's what happens when you go on holiday. I'm sorry, we stop the recording. We had a lot. Oh, better, I suppose. Yeah. Oh, it works. Oh, end. Uh, um, no, Are you ready to go home, guys? No. <laughs> no, I can't go home. <laughs> oh, okay. No, I'm, I'm going to go now. Stop recording. Cool. Yeah, that one. And you can still try again. Yes. Yeah. So you can still yeah. stay on and we can 